video sets out to show you how to set up a new weather station database having installed your WeatherLink software. When you get your WeatherLink software CD simply uh, click it into your CD drive uh, click install and just follow the wizard through and eventually once it's finished an icon will appear on your desktop such uh, like this one here and this is the icon to hit to open up the WeatherLink software. When you first open up the WeatherLink software you'll be prompted in the screen area here would you like to create a new station at this point click yes um, I've already got a weather station uh, in, in installed here so it admits is that screen uh, here so to install a new weather station I'm going to click file a new station and here I will give a station name having given it a name I click OK and a wizard will now uh, or a walkthrough wizard will now prompt me to go through and set up the station so at this point I click yes and I click OK and I actually ensure choose here which model of weather station I'm using and my one here I'm using a Vantage Pro I'm using a 0.2 millimeter rain tipper I've also got some additional temperature humidity stations set up so I'm going to click on this uh, to, to show the uh, additional stations so I'm going to click on these four boxes to show both temperature and humidity had I got solar radiation I'd click here leaf wetness click here etc I always come to this area here and choose never on both these boxes and then once you've done that click OK. Um, enter the communication port you're using. Click OK at this point. If you're using WeatherLink IP or indeed the new Vantage Connect which are both the systems whereby you um, download via the internet at this point here you would choose TCP IP and for ease I would choose Web Download and in this area here you put in here the username and password that you will have chosen when the product was registered. Having done that, click OK and you can now at this point choose the units for your weather station. So I'm going to leave it at Celsius, rain in millimetres, my barometer in millibars, elevation feet, wind speed in miles an hour. So I'll click OK at this point if you wanted to have your weather station downloading automatically you could click on this box here and go and choose the time that you want that to happen bear in mind if you're going to choose that option your PC needs to be on 24 7 so most people will skip this area the longitude and latitude on your station would have been preset when we configure WeatherLink IP or the Vantage Connect for you so you can skip at this point and uh, this area here you're now finished and uh, I don't want to go back so I'll click no. Now this weather station has been installed set up for a few days so I'm going to see if we've got any data to download and the easiest way to click uh, to find out is to click on the download button here which is the second icon in. So it's prompting me I've got some data to uh, download I'll click OK at this point and uh, it's now done it. To check if it's done or not if you click on the notepad tab here you can see the readings coming through from the weather station, in this case every 15 minutes. Uh, as we speak at the moment it's uh, just before 4 o'clock. So there's the quarter to 4 download on the 19th of March. So the data is all there. To view the data, there's one of two ways of doing this. You can either view it graphically or in Tableau or report mode. So to look at it graphically the best graph to look at is the make a plot button here this one here simply shows you the last three days this one is user defined so I'm going to choose make a plot at the moment I've got outside temperature and barometric pressure in the grey here well I'm going to deselect the barometric pressure I'm not too interested in that but I might want to have a look at rainfall and I might also want to have a look at humidity and at the moment um, we're spanning three days so if I wanted to look at a week I could zoom out 
if I wanted to look at less than three days I can zoom in down to literally hourly intervals so I'm going to choose a week <clears throat> so you can see on this weather station here there was some rain on Monday and Tuesday um, if I click on this button here you see the scale for rain in millimetres uh, if I wanted the scale to be millimetres on this side I can choose here click on the button choose rain and have perhaps temperature over here and there you can see the rainfall on Monday and Tuesday you can essentially make whatever colours you want on here with these lines by choosing colours and uh, if we wanted to change the uh, outside humidity for a different colour click on here choose the orange ok that it's now orange I'm actually going to make it black because it stands out a bit better and there they are the additional sensors we added on here's the additional temperature there's the third one and these are actually inside polytunnels so it's quite interesting to be able to compare the outside temperature with the temperature inside the tunnel so I'm going to make these colours slightly different again so we can see them in a more defined fashion so I'll come down to second temperature and choose something a bit clearer hasn't made too much difference that's better and I'll choose uh, another cutter for the temperature the third temperature here <coughs> so if I switch the rain off we can see here ambient is the red the green is in one block of tunnels and the blue in another and um, we can see what heat benefit we're getting I click on uh, this is actually in Celsius here so you can see on this day the ambient air temperature was just over 10 degrees where inside this particular tunnel it got up to 19 degrees so clearly shows the difference uh, between the two if I wanted to make this my default graph I would literally come and choose the plot button here and choose make default and then if I shut that down and click on this button again there it is defaulting to a week indicating or showing these variables here and whatever variable you want to switch on and off you can literally come down here and um, click on the tabs and it will uh, bring in the data that you want to look at the other way of doing this is looking at it uh, as a report I click on reports here and choose this month this weather station was actually set up on the 14th of March here it's being tested so we've only got four or five days worth of data but <coughs> it essentially summarizes uh, the, the weather for the day the mean temperature on the 14th being 6.5 the high was 10 at half past 5 the low was 3.9 at midnight and uh, any rain being recorded here the average wind speed the high wind speed and the dominant wind direction and this is all totaled up at the bottom so for rain in particular this value down here will be the total rain for the month if we had more data in here by clicking on summarize month there'd be a list of months to choose from you could choose any month you liked to get you a summary of the weather the one thing I'm going to do with this weather station, since we've only just set it up, I'm going to set up a rain database for it because that's often quite interesting. This tab here is the rain database. So I click on here, it's saying we haven't got one, would you like to create one? Yes I would. So here it is, 2016. So as the years roll by with this station, you'll be able to see the current year month totals together with the min, max and average for your particular site. I'm going to go and open another weather station up so we can look at more data so if I go file open station here here's a list of my weather stations and I'll go and find um, <clears throat> one to look at if I click on reports here and summarize month 
Here's the list of all the months. So if I want to look at what happened uh, in last November, for example, I click on the month, click OK, and the month's data comes up. So I've got a good summary here day by day. We can see from a rainfall perspective, 82.4 mm rain fell in uh, November in this part of the world. And if I actually want to have a look at his rain database, I click on here, there's his rain database. This station was installed back in November 2013, so three years worth of data almost. And you can see here the monthly totals for the last three years, and his mean max averages coming out, which is quite interesting over the course of time.